Welcome back to another video on the basics of Affinity Designer. In this video, we're going to go through the layers panel. I you know in other videos, we've touched on some of the basics with the layers, but in this video, we're going to go through some of the effects and styles and some keyboard shortcuts to make your life much easier. <laughs> so to get started, I'm just going to use the ellipse tool and I'm going to create a few different circles. And I'm just going to quickly change the color so they're not all of the same gray color. Okay. So as you can see, they are all layered with the yellow being on the bottom and the red being on the top. If I were to move this, you can see that the red is indeed on top. If at any point that you want to change the order of your layers, you can come over to your layers panel and move like this red one all the way to the bottom and it's now on the bottom. You can also use keyboard shortcuts, command, and then the right bracket will bring it forwards. You can use command and the left bracket and it will move it down. If you want to create like a clipping mask, you can click, like say the red one. If I want to clip it to this yellow one, actually I'm gonna do the blue so it's a little bit easier to see. You can look over on your layers panel and it's going to come about four-fifths of the way and you will see that it has clipped to that blue layer which is a really really handy thing to do and at any point if you want to move it around click that triangle and you can move it back out if you want to create a new layer go to the bottom right of your layers panel and the one button that looks like a piece of paper we'll add a new layer. This is really great if you are drawing something and like say a flower and you don't want everything to be in the same layer so you can hide it. If you want to like see how it's looking you can click on and off of it or you could lock something on a bottom layer. So it's really nice to have multiple layers when you are creating your designs. You can also erase your layers by having it selected and then clicking on the trash can. The button that is in between them is for a pixel layer or rasterized layer. This is if you are working on something that you're not worried about being scaled. So you can do a little bit more with your pixel based designs as opposed to vector. I'm going to create a video on creating pixel based designs in a later video. So the very bottom moving towards the left, you can click on the layer effects and it will bring up all the different effects that you can put onto your particular layer that you're working on or the object you're working on. If you're wanting to do multiple effects on one object, it probably is better to click on that FX button. If not, you can click over to the next tab, which we're going to go over in a few minutes because it does the exact same thing as this layer effects pop up. Your next button will have like levels and curves, anything like this you may have seen in Photoshop, if you've worked in Photoshop at all, I use it a lot on like images or photographs. I haven't actually used it in any of my vectors, but with this you can change the brightness or darkness of your colors. I'm just going to X off of this. The next one over is your mask layer. And I am going to go over the mask layer in the pixel based design video coming out in a few weeks. 
because I only ever use the mask when I am working once again on pixel based designs. I haven't actually used it with any of my vector designs. So I'm going to click on this top circle, which is the green one. Moving it to the very top of that layers panel, there is the opacity. So if you want to change this so you can see directly through it, you can change the opacity of your objects. I use the opacity a lot when I'm working on like something in the background when I'm doing patterns. If I want to add like dots or stripes or something like that, I will go in and add that detail first and then I will change the opacity so I can get it to the exact look and feel that I want. So the next one over, you can change how your object will appear. So you, this is another one. If you've worked in Photoshop, I know you have probably used it. I have used it a ton in editing photos. So with like the color and overlay and screen. Once again, it's not something I really used on vector based designs, but it is fun to go in and play around to see what each one does. And I'm sure I will be going over that once again in the pixel based designs. Earlier I mentioned how you can lock layers or how to make them hidden. So with this red one, if you un click that check mark, you will see that it no longer appears because you have hidden the object. Another great thing to do is click on that lock and it will appear next to that check mark and you have locked it in place. So no matter what I do trying to grab that red one, I absolutely cannot because I have locked it into place and it cannot be moved. So moving over to effects. Like I was mentioning, this is the same thing as that FX button when you have the layers tab selected. So I'm going to select the green one because it'll be the easiest to see. And Gaussian blur is the first thing. And you can go in and just play with it. And this is just going to blur that particular object. So this is kind of a fun one. You could go back to the layers and make that clipping mask. So it's kind of a fun way to add some color in and blend it in. So back in the effects, I'm going to unselect Gaussian blur. Next is the outer shadow, which is exactly like what you would expect. It's just adding a shadow to that outer part of the circle and you can offset it to give it more of a dramatic effect. And you can change the color and opacity of that shadow. The next one is your inner shadow and it is for the inner part of that object. This is really great. I know I've used this to kind of give the look and feel of like a pin or a button because it gives it almost that 3D effect. Once again, you can offset it, which makes me think of a planet. So the next one is an outer glow. So as opposed to doing a shadow, it's like a glow. The next is the inner glow. And your outline is just kind of like a stroke. It's just adding on the outline to the object. And as with the other ones, you can change the color and opacity. The next is the 3D. And I actually haven't used it. I was playing around with this last night and it's really, really cool. So if you do click on that cog, it will bring up even more effects to do it. But just playing around with this was really, really cool because it does give it a 3D look. And once again, if you're doing something like a design for a button or a pin, this is a really, really great way of doing like a mock-up for it. So you really get that idea of what it looks like. 
Next is bevel and emboss. The next one is color overlay. So it's just changing the color of the object you have selected. Most of the time I would just go into the colors panel and change that as opposed to doing color overlay. You can do blending modes with this one. So it will change the color a little bit. And the last is the gradient overlay. So if you're wanting to add an a gradient to your object. This is a good way of doing it, especially if you want to change the opacity so it shows over the top of the color of the object. You can click that cog and change the scale and the offset angle and colors. The next tab over is styles. So with this, if you have your object selected, just click on the first one. Sunset has obviously the sunset look, yellow and orange. Next is your rainbow, metal, onyx, glass, and salmon. So that is a very brief overview of the layers panel. In future videos, I'm going to go over using the layers panel for pixel based designs, as well as another video finishing the tools at the top and then going into the pixel persona and how it is different from your vector based design panel. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, comment, and share.